Lou Lyons is a founding member of the band of Freetown Collect Collective. Rather, He's a musical innovator, adept guitarist, a producer, and so much more. To use some of his words, he says, and ooh, he's so deep, I just love it when he speaks. Got the right amount of brains and the right amount of street. Well, you be the judge of that. We say good evening and thank you for being here. That was an ambush. <laughs> yeah, man, definitely. I wasn't expecting that at all. It's a pleasure to be here, DK. And glad to have you here as, yes, as a member of Freetown Collective, but mm -hmm. more specifically as an individual. Because one of the things that we've seen you do right of late is full disclosure radio. So mm -hmm. that is the jump off for this yes, conversation. Sir. What is full disclosure radio about? Full disclosure radio is about me grabbing life as it comes and removing the filters. Last year I was on a, a, a trip to LA and unexpectedly the pilot said that we would be flying through a thunderstorm that they didn't predict. And it, that plane flew through a thunderstorm for 45 minutes. I had to make peace with my God, and I had to make peace with myself. And that was one of the promises I made myself. Should I survive this? There are things that I, I need to say. There are things that I need my community to know. And I'm not going to wait until I hear it from somebody else. If I know it, let me say it. If I could do it, let me try. All right, but people say that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Mm -hmm. So yes, you made the promise to yourself. Mm -hmm. But take us through the steps of okay, making this promise in a plane, going through the thunderstorm, mm -hmm. to actually being on land and saying, okay, well, this is something that people can actually tune into mm -hmm. now. Some people say they never hear the voice of God. I think the voice of God is in the loud idea. The idea that it is, that is so loud, it, 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 it is persistent, it will refuse um, to shut up, it would not allow you to sleep, it would not allow you to make any other plans until you address this one first. That was, that was the loudest idea I've had since joining up with Muhammad to start Freedom Collective. In terms of the format, the location, the platform of mm -hmm. the show, what describe that for me. I mean, it's young as Instagram. If you're not on Instagram, you're insane things, <laughs> really and truly. Ah, that's a joke. Uh, but it's where the young people are, and the conversation is to benefit young people. Uh, my peers, most of the, the peers, I know around my age, we've been university educated and we took most advantage of gate. The gate started to close after we kind of moved away from, from getting our degrees. So the people who needed to, to, to become participants in this community, they are readily available on Instagram. So I decided to start there. Um, it is meant to be a very organic exercise. So there's no, there's no, there's no pre-production notes. There are no props. There's no set. It's just my home in my backyard, in the Sunday morning sun, and just me and the people. You might see sometimes you're looking very fancy. I don't know if it's a smoking jacket I mean, or something, but you, you go with the spirit. Sometimes the spirits, eh, you know, put on something nice and feel good because it's about presentation too not just how it is perceived aesthetically, but the energy. And sometimes you need to feel the energy before people feel the energy from you. Now, one of the things that, and we actually see some footage of you looking mm -hmm. very fancy, but behind you, Hello. you have um, a mm -hmm. great deal of books. Mm -hmm. And in one, one or two of those that I've looked at, you've cited, you've made reference, well, you mm -hmm. make references all the time. Mm -hmm. But there's been some occasions where you've specifically said, okay, but this book, I want you to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. I want you to take a look at this book for this reason. Mm -hmm. What's some of the energy or the thought process behind that? Uh, yeah, it's not. It's, 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 it's very important for people to go to the well, to the well themselves. Yes, people would listen to information through sources that make it easy for them to digest. But at some point, you need to be critical of the critic. And if something I am saying is not sitting right, then you should be able to go to the source yourself. And I'm always an advocate for people becoming independent thinkers, even if that independent thinking is at my detriment. Well, I appreciate the fact that many times you would say, I don't have the answer. Mm -hmm. I don't have a cure-all, a magic bullet, a silver bullet. 
But what are your thoughts on this? How can we together contribute towards some sort of way out, a way to something that is better? And it seems as though many times you have people on platforms, on, on spaces, they're saying, look at me, look at me. Mm -hmm. And you just, you just spoke about that yourself. You're saying, don't necessarily look at me. Mm -hmm. Take what I'm telling you, mm -hmm. but feel free to interrogate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. um, what's, the, what's the driving force behind that kind of ethos? Mirroring. If I see myself in you, then you should also see yourself in me. And the only way to manifest that mirror is through conversation. Conversation. Not speaking to or speaking at. So... Even uh, in the dynamic of being a presenter of sorts, there has to be some space in that presentation style that leaves room for, ex for exchange. So if I am saying, here is the answer, that's, that's absolute. I'm not leaving the door open for responses. I'm not leaving the door open for critique. I'm not leaving um, the door open for the infinite permutations of answers that is available from the cosmos. I do have them all. My vessel cannot house them all. And with that in mind, mm -hmm. you said that there's not necessarily a format as such. Mm -hmm. But I want to put, pull things into two broad categories. There's some things where you share your thoughts mm -hmm. and you ask for feedback generally. Mm -hmm. And then there's also instances where there'll be a conversation that you have. Mm -hmm. Who are some of the people that you've had thus far? And what are some of the topics that you all have addressed? Well, I have some, some, some notable conversations that I can remember off the top of my head. One is with um, DJ Rockers, J. Ron Remy. We had the opportunity to, to talk about fatherhood and masculinity. That conversation stood out to me because that was a very, very vulnerable conversation for two black men to be having on a social media platform, not something that you'd, you encounter um, quite often. Um, and the reason why I, that stands out to me is Rockus is a friend, but there's so many things about friends that you don't know until the circumstance to express and to share you know, presents itself. And if we keep waiting on circumstances to present themselves, they may never present themselves. We have to create space so that I could pressure you to share and you could pressure me to share. And with that in mind, what's some of the pros and cons of being able to have a platform that you say, okay, well, you're fully in control of? Mm -hmm. A little while ago, the Prime Minister spoke about the fact that all media is beholden to someone. Mm -hmm. And he who pays the piper calls the tune. Mm -hmm. um, how, does, how, how does that manifests itself in your situation mm. with regard to full disclosure? Well, the reason why it is called full disclosure radio, because I'm kind of um, piggybacking over what was known as pirate radio in the 80s. There were a lot of unsanctioned broadcast signals from people who um, were daring enough to challenge what the institutions were saying. They were challenging the mass media messages and saying, although these things may be true, we have good enough reason not to trust those sources. Now let's, let's open it up. Let's democratize knowledge. I don't know what will, what will become of the content. I don't know um, what will become of the format or the programming when the owners of these platforms decide to change the rules. But until then, we will do what we are doing. And if they do that, or if, if circumstances change, just as we had pirate radio with terrestrial radio, and now there's pirate radio of virtual um, broadcast, we'll find ways. All it is is sharing. Our forefathers found ways to drum into the distance. And we continue to play that drum. I, I talk about playing drum, not beating drum. This wrong with hardly mm. beat children. But we continue this conversation <laughs> when we return. Lou Lyons artist, we speak about some specific things in terms of vulnerability in public spaces as well as so much more. Stay with us, we'll come back out.
Welcome back. We are speaking with artist Lou Lyons about some of his takes on things and some of the ways that we can actually look forward moving into the future. Now, Lou, you were speaking about having some very naked conversations mm -hmm. in public spaces. What's the importance of being able to create those kind of spaces where those kind of conversations can happen? And at the same time, the person you're speaking with feels mm -hmm. safe enough to mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's for someone like me, who um, came from a, a working poor family, um, and now being able to occupy some space in the middle class, it is easy for me to normalize my experience as the experience, as the Trinbegonian experience. But when you go out there and, you, and you, you, you converse with people who are still in the working poor bracket and who are closer to survival than I am, you get to realize that there's this pervading sense of mistrust and distrust of anything institutional. The only way I have been able to meet people who don't have any trust in the system, don't have any faith in anything going their way should they have to um, lock heads with, with any of the institutions of the state, is just by being raw and honest and vulnerable with them. And if that works for those who are closest to survival, then it, it, it works for all of us. The rest of us just pretend. The rest of us just pretend that we understand what's going on. The rest of us just pretend that we're okay with what's going on because we don't feel the pain of survival as intimately as they do. So it is, one, talking in a language to those who need it most, those who are closer to survival, and then talking through the filters that we develop when we're not so close to survival and saying, no, 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 no. What we really need to do is resonate. We need to have resonant conversations, and those are the ones that usually come out sounding bad and unrehearsed, and there's some tears and some stammering involved. It's not polished, because it's the heart talking. One of the things I appreciate when you are sharing, and it's just you holding the space, uh, is the fact that you're saying, oh, you lay out premises. OK, mm -hmm. this is what we want to discuss today. Mm -hmm. This is where I am coming from. So you mm -hmm. talk about your biases, your context. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And with that in mind, then you launch into it. So people know exactly your perspective so they can put it in that context and that rubric. It kind of reminds me, certain ways, of a tracing match. So like in Jamaica, you have two people tracing each other. One person mm -hmm. just kind of lambastes herself, bring themselves down to board. Mm -hmm. But after they put the serve, and, and that is me, but you see mm. you, <laughs> so by the time you finish with that person, they have nothing to come back from because yeah, yeah. you don't lay mm -hmm. yourself bare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what that also does is that helps to kind of lower a default defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I want to ask about, how important is it to you, though, to humanize individuals while still calling for accountability? Because it's something that I've seen you do more mm -hmm. than once. Because I don't believe they, they, they both are mutually exclusive. I believe they are together. I'm going to call you to accountability by saying that I am also accountable. And I am accountable with this closet of bones that I have behind me. Now let me try by leading by example, by showing you some of my bones and showing you, well, it, I have not died. Have not been crucified. So let's all start by trying to share some bones. And with that in mind, I want you ex to expound on a statement that you made, please. Oh, let's get to it. <laughs> wow. Talking about the commission of police. Yes. Saying, even though many people find them a polarizing figure, mm -hmm. so they're on one side, or some people find themselves diametrically opposed. Mm -hmm. you, you said that you think in this time, in this space, is the perfect man for the job. Mm -hmm. In the same breath, mm -hmm. and by some of the same tokens, mm -hmm. he's also the worst person for the job. That's right. Take us through that. Anyone who has some level of mastery is a person who is an instrument. 
And an instrument is just what it is. It is an instrument. The will behind the instrument is what purposes the instrument. Um, our beloved commissioner, he's one of the most articulate public figures we have. He's able to express complex ideas in a way that can come out as jokes, can come out as very solemn statements. He has the ability to express to the public in a language that is understandable to all what he wants to convey. That's one of the things that makes him one of the best candidates for his job. Not only that, he's young and his accolades and achievements. This, this world is not a world for young people, although it is a young person's world. There's, there's a paradox there that we don't have time to unravel. But the ability to, in the protective services, reach that height at such an age is an achievement. And thirdly, he has the ability to command respect among his ranks. Now, I have to question whenever certain statements are made by him, whose will is that the reflection of? Those statements and those actions, what paradigms are they in service of? Are they in service of furthering those who are already oppressed? Or are those in service of bringing to justice those who need to be brought to justice, but in a way that is fair and in a way that is equitable? Sometimes those channels aren't very clear to me. So when I, when I make statements about the police commissioner, it is me trying to clarify the will and the intention behind his actions and his statements, and if his will and his intentions are pure, can we also examine consequently who are these actions and statements in service of? Because sometimes I can say something with an the road to hell is paved with, in, with, with good intentions, but intent and effect are sometimes divorced concepts. Now, the fact that you were able to articulate like that like that, coming from music, having that passion, that drive, moving to journalism, moving to law as a registered barrister, then back to music, your first love as they describe it, Mm -hmm. How did that process help you to for, for you to implement, I guess, some of these some of these statements, some of these things, some of these energies as you do now? Knowing how things work. It's as simple as that. Music, you have to break down music to state to, to, to keys, notes, chords. These things come together and build bigger motifs and arrangements. And a song is based on notes and chords and keys. Um, likewise, any, any, any of the, the, the um, social sciences, journalism, law, sociology, psychology, is based on these little principles that you have to take and understand on their own. And as we get deeper and deeper into the concept, we start stacking them. I've learned that. And I've learned that this is the way all of us view life, and this is the way we experience our society. They are basic principles, and then we, we build on them. In terms of building and building, we started, or I started, with a quote from Human Form, uh, <laughs> the first song, I believe, of Born in Darkness, the yeah. Freetown Collective album. Mm -hmm. The official video for that came out, and somebody about a year ago, they said the responsibility of an artist is to show society their face, you spoke about mir mirroring mm -hmm. and encouraging them to do better. It is way more than entertainment. And the person said they respect, appreciate, and elevate this kind of energy. This is Amika L from Dance Fitness Tobago. So we thank her, mm -hmm. as we do thank you for the time. And we thank you for tuning in. Lou Lyons, artist, spend some time with us here. And we want to thank you on behalf of the entire news team. I'm DK Rasta. Thank you for joining us. Good night.